Hi guys, Brian here from Slick Games. Uh, welcome to my devlog for Nevergreen. At the end of August I decided to take part in the Kenny Jam, which was a two day jam starting on Friday afternoon and ending on Sunday. It required me to only use assets made by Kenny, which was great for me as I find creating art quite difficult. I waited patiently for the theme to be announced, and it was cursed. I then had a couple of hours of work time still remaining before I could start brainstorming. I initially considered different interpretations of the word cursed, and then extended each of these areas until I had a decent tree of information. I decided that an RPG game would fit with the theme quite well. It took a few minutes to sketch out a rough story for the game. You play as a hero that has to destroy the evil castles that surround a town in a pentagram shape. I then had a quick look through the Kenny website and downloaded some assets that I thought might work. After dinner and putting the kids to bed, I quickly created a basic scene and some player movement. I set up some auto tiles for water and dark grass to test it out. I added collision detection for the water and then added some trees and a house into a Y sort node to allow the player to walk behind them. Now it was time to play around with shaders. I wanted to add a sort of corruption effect to the town area which would reduce as you defeated the surrounding towers. My first attempt didn't go very well. But I managed to sort it out and worked out how to change the blend amount in the code. I then set about creating a basic layout for my world with a path going down to the starting area that the player would spawn in. I had some interesting issues with my auto tiling but decided to just work around these instead of actually trying to fix them. I surrounded the world with water so that the player can't escape. A quick test of the new camera movement and constraints and I was ready to move on to creating the starting area. This is an enclosed area that will have an NPC to talk to and will allow the player to familiarise themselves with the movement and interaction controls. At 2am, after adding an NPC and an interaction prompt, I decided to call it a night. The next morning I went out for a coffee and worked on creating a to-do list in Trello. After this I went out for a chilled bike ride with the family and saw some lovely houses. After dinner I sat down for what I hoped would be a productive afternoon. First up, I worked out how my seed changes and how I reposition the player in the world when they came out of the building. The idea here is that there will be a conversation between the player and the guard, who will then take you to see the duke in the castle. When you've accepted the quest, you will exit the castle and be free to roam the world. With that in mind, I created the main castle and the model for the evil towers. I added these and a bunch more houses and paths etc to the world. I then worked on the castle scene, adding the duke and another interaction that at the moment just boots you out of the castle. I then set about creating the tower rooms. I wanted these to be procedurally generated, which wasn't too hard to do with the help of some awesome tutorials on YouTube, but I did spend over an hour trying to get the auto tiler to work properly with my wall assets before totally giving up. However, I was able to randomly generate scenes for the player to explore. Next up, I added a zombie enemy, gave it some path planning and a detection area that made them charge at the player when they get too close. After that, the next logical step was to add a sword to the player, which tracks the mouse position and allows you to kill the zombies. It was at this point that I realised that OBS does not like my tower scenes. While the game runs smoothly, for some reason the recorded video has a really low frames per second. I'm really sorry about this. Anyway, I started playing around with the lighting, making the towers much darker and adding a light effect to the sword. This looks super cool in the towers, but when you go back into the world it doesn't really work very well. I sorted this out by simply turning the light off when you're not in the towers. After this I worked on player damage and health, making the zombies take two hits before death and also hurting the player when they collide with him. If you lose all your health you're kicked out of the tower, which at the moment takes you back to the starting position in the world. I added in a level complete state when all the zombies in the tower are killed. When you exit a completed tower, that tower is removed from the map and when all towers are beaten the curse is lifted. Hooray! It was then half one in the morning so I stopped for the night. On Sunday I woke up about nine o'clock and after some breakfast I got cracking on adding in the dialogue system, which took me about three hours to debug. I added a menu, additional towers, and made the difficulty of each tower scale based on the number of towers you've already defeated. Two hours before the deadline, I added in some stock music that I previously bought in a Humble Bundle and started working on sound effects. The final game looked like this. An hour and a half before the deadline, I started the export process. I'd heard this may take some time to do, so I wanted to make sure I had time to fix any last minute problems, which turned out to be a really good idea as the HTML version of the game had no sound. Half an hour before the deadline, I worked out that I wasn't including JSON files in my export, so I fixed that and got the HTML and Windows versions of the game uploaded to itch. I managed to submit the game 15 minutes before the deadline. Sadly, I had missed out on uploading the Linux and Mac versions by a few seconds, so they weren't put onto the page. But overall, I was incredibly happy. It felt so good to see my game sat alongside other submissions. 
So, Nevergreen did really well, especially for the first game I've ever published. It came 32nd in the jam overall and 27th for gameplay, which I'm extremely pleased with. Most people seemed to really like it, but there were a few suggestions and improvements that I wanted to make. Most of these centred around the combat system lacking some juice, so I added a knockback and a flash to the enemies when they get hit, and of course, a nice bit of camera shake. I also made the sword swing a little bit more natural, and added a timeout to it so the player can't click while it's still swinging. I played around with the light on the sword, eventually putting it on the player instead for a less nauseating effect when in battle. I added a blur shader into the mix, so it's more difficult to see what's about to jump out at you. There's obviously a bunch more stuff that I could add to the game if I wanted to, but for now it's freely available to play on itch, the link to which is in the description, so please check it out, and maybe give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. I have another Game Jam devlog coming up soon, so if you don't want to miss that, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.